we have, of course, the last couple of days been talking about the uh, brutal murder of Saudi-born legal permanent resident of this country, Jamal Khashoggi. And I wanted to talk to Frank Gaffney about that. He is the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy. Did you know Khashoggi, uh, Frank, at all? I did not, Lars. Um, uh, known of him a bit, but uh, not personally acquainted with him, no. What do you think? We're being told that he was in that embassy in Turkey for uh, some interrogation. He apparently walked in to try to get a birth certificate of some kind that was going to allow him, or no, a divorce certificate that would allow him to get married to his fiance. And he goes in, his fiance standing outside. He simply does not come back out at the time the embassy uh, uh, closed up. And he was apparently uh, interrogated, and they say an interrogation gone wrong. What little we've been able to find out about what happened Is it pretty clear here that the Saudi government or people who acted on behalf of the Saudi government murdered this man? It seems as though that's the case. Uh, Of course, in the the consulate, it would have been people who were supposed to be there, um, presumably representatives of the Saudi government. There were some 15 uh, men, uh, many of them with special forces background who were flown in, I think, earlier that day or the day before and left immediately after this incident. So there, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that suggests that um, the government of Saudi Arabia was involved. I, I kind of think of this from what we've known so far, Lars, as kind of a a mafia war. Because on the one hand, you had the Saudi government uh, predominantly now guided by the crown prince, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS, a man who is clearly uh, consolidating power and trying to take his country in a lot of different ways uh, uh, in a new direction. And on the other hand, you had a guy who was very uh, closely associated with and seems to have worked for the former head of Saudi intelligence, Turkey al-Faisal, a man with a Muslim brotherhood background uh, who had worked in kind of the media relations uh, space for uh, Turkey al-Faisal and the intelligence services of uh, Saudi Arabia under the previous government, uh, the one that um, bin Salman and his father have essentially replaced. And what we know about that, Lars, is evidently uh, this Muslim brother, uh, Jamal Khashoggi, was uh, working at appears with Turkey al-Faisal against his own government. And so it wasn't just that he was saying nasty things about it, and that can be a capital offense, by the way, under Islam. You're insulting the keepers of the holy places, uh, the the family of Saudi Arabia, royal family. But he was also threatening, it seems, uh, the, the, uh, the government of uh, now predominantly MBS, as they call him. So it, it was uh, it was a Apparently, whether it was designed as such or whether it just went bad, we don't know at the moment. But I think it was kind of like, uh, you know, one mafiosa uh, Don took out the other and uh, and did it in a ruthless fashion. Why? Well, because, Frank, I think the American people, and I, I think you know this better than I do, are being sold a bill of goods. We're being told, well, this innocent journalist who's just writing things that are critical of the government, which journalists in this country do all the time, whether it's Obama or or Trump, they, they write critical things about the government. I say critical things about the government, but this guy was a player in the Muslim Brotherhood. He was a friend of Osama bin Laden, and you said that he shared that organization's goal of trying to supplant the current government, which, as you say, the current government of Saudi Arabia is trying to take that country in a Western direction, and, uh, and, and this guy was trying to stop that. So... You know, while that while that may not justify his murder, um, I, I could certainly see that if the American public's being told, well, this is just a journalist uh, who was murdered and that's wrong. They're not being told he was a political player who may have been trying to, is it fair to say, overthrow the current Saudi government and take it back in an Islamist direction? Well, there's certainly reason to believe that that's the aspiration of the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, they, they didn't uh, overthrow. Uh, the government of uh, President Mubarak in Egypt, they they were able to achieve that through a democratic process, but they certainly were 
um, taking Egypt in a Sharia supremacist direction. Now, the government of Saudi Arabia is Sharia supremacist, too, but it's it's a it's a group under the Brotherhood that would be very hostile to us, as was the Morsi regime in uh, post-Mubarak Egypt. And I think uh, what the president, our government, is is trying to wrestle with is, first of all, we don't know as much as we'd like. And second of all, we don't want to bring or in other ways contribute to um, the removal of a relatively friendly, not altogether, but relatively friendly government under Mohammed bin Salman with one that would be dead set against us and our vital interests in a strategic place like Saudi Arabia. The Iranians would like that. Um, I, other enemies of this country would uh, applaud, but I think that's not in our interest, and the president's walking that fine line, I think. Yeah, and it's a tough one. Let's talk about something else. The Statutory Commission to Assess the Threat to the United States from Electromagnetic Pulse. Big name. We've talked about EMP before on this program. It could come from an, an attack from any number of sources. It could come from a natural solar flare, but it would literally knock out some or all of every single computer chip in America, which runs everything refrigeration, water, power, sewer, you know, the, the whole thing. And, and many, many people would die if that happened in even a, an area of this country. The Congress is finally hearing some specific things that can be done to safeguard against this threat. Well, they've been hearing it for years, uh, Lars. The first of these commissions uh, reported in 2004 and uh, has done so several times since. Um, a whole bunch of reports were finished about a year ago. Uh, they haven't seen a public light. Some of them were classified, but some of them were supposed to be unclassified, and the government's sort of been sitting on them. Meanwhile, the commission that was extraordinarily informed, knowledgeable, talented, and uh, I think authoritative on these matters has been replaced by a politically appointed one that uh, I fear is going to be none of those things. And so we may not actually get the kind of uh, clarity about the danger that we're facing, let alone the kind of corrective action that's needed, um, at least if this uh, this new commission that's coming on stream uh, presumably shortly is uh, is involved. And, and this is heartbreaking because I think the president wants to do something about this. I believe John Bolton, his ambassador and uh, national security advisor, is very con- committed to trying to fix this. There's an executive order that's sort of uh, kicking around inside the uh, the executive branch at the moment to protect our grid. It's absolutely vital. When you say a lot of Americans might die, by some estimates, according to the previous commission, it might be 90 percent of us. Yeah, if it hit the, the whole country. Down space down yeah, I mean, if we had the kind of, kind of attack, say, in, you know, North Korea, that may be a smaller uh, threat at this point. But if anybody, a terrorist group, hit the West Coast, with an EMP and knocked out all water, all power, all sewer, all 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 supply, all ability to move goods around or anything like that, we could we could end up with a lot of pe- communication. Yeah, yeah, all of that. All even of if the rest of the country were capable of throwing in to help, we see how even small disasters uh, will will tax the ability of the country to to deal with it. You know, a hurricane that hits a relatively small area and it still takes a tremendous amount of resources to make that happen. So. I hope this president does get something done about it. Frank, thanks for your insights. We appreciate it. Pleasure, Lars. Thank you. That's Frank Gaffney, the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy.